Hi guys, this is Snapcraft once again. Welcome to another content produced by me. This is ASUS 16 round of two, otherwise known as the finals, English commentary. Uh, this is going to be mini versus effort in the fifth game in the series on the map Invader. Two player map with mini spawning in the top left corner and the blue color as Protoss and Soki spawning in the bottom right corner in the red color as Zerp. The game is on 3-1. Mini was able to pull one game back, but you know what? I suspect that it's his winning streak is not going to continue much longer. I mean, he's won basically because of spawning positions and uh, anticipation, uh, incorrect anticipation and assumptions by Soki. And that is not going to likely to bode well, you know, like repeatedly, right? You're going to just win one game and then the next game you're going to be gone. But anyways, Hero is in the crowd. What is he? Like, uh, he was a quarterfinalist or something? He's definitely not in the semifinal, but I think he might have been a quarterfinalist this year. Anyways, me expands maybe? Oh, he's going to build a gateway. With the way things look, he might be building a gateway. Yeah, that's going to be gateway first. And going for scouting right away. He's going to try to apply a little bit of Zealot-ish pressure here. On the other side of the map, looks like uh, Soki has produced a spawning pool. Uh, <coughs> and taken his gas. This is a two-player map. And I have mentioned that it's quite terrible uh, for Zerg. And one of you, one of you on the audience have disagree. But you know what? Let's talk a little bit about it because let's take a look at this map, right? I mean, the third base that you can take is either the 9 o'clock or the inner, uh, what is it, uh, 5 o'clock, right? The 9 o'clock is a base on the high ground, true. But the choke is huge. The choke is like enormous, gigantic. Uh, and that is a disadvantage, I think. And then the fourth base, uh, the other base that you could take is at the... Uh, in a five o'clock position and that base is like i mean that's like the tombstone of zergman because there's like three angles you can attack from i mean you could say it's the same thing with protoss but you know what protoss might win before you get to that stage you you might you know protoss might win before you actually get to the protoss third base uh but of course uh, not everything is one-sided right uh, on the other side you have protoss having two angles leading up to the main base uh and that is also a disadvantage because uh, there's a lot more uh, surface area that Protoss will need to cover. Nice drone drill, prop drill, excuse me. But now he's going to be in some serious trouble because six zerglings are inbounding in his base. And Mini is just being chased by one zergling, which means the other five are heading over towards the main base. Keep in mind that third base for Soki is not yet deployed. His Zealot arrived at just a random minute here and takes out a Zealot. A zergling slow reaction. My Soki, what are the Zerlings going to be doing? They're going to be returning home. And no cannon coming up. It looks like because uh, Mini, was, Mini forces his enemy Zerlings to return. He's not even making a cannon. He would be very greedy if he puts down a cybernetic score instead of anything. Uh, the hatchery is not yet done. So, excuse me, the, the, the extractor is not yet done. So, you cannot actually pull the drones against the extractor. So, that, that was the reason. There was no drone uh, drill there. But anyways... Both of the pro, uh, drones get saved at the last minute, so that's nice, that's, that's nice. No Zerlings get destroyed, and that's a terrible micro mistake by Mini. He's not taking out any of the Zerlings, but now two Zerlots are going to be hiding in the corner. This Overlord sees everything, and we have to be very, very careful if I was Mini here. I would be very hard-pressed to push too hard, because counter-attack is a terrible thing. What the heck is this build? Okay, looks like the Forge is being made in the main. Uh, to save any kind of trouble against Hydrogen's attack. And the Zerlings are going to be coming from behind. A lot of Zerlings are being made. These two Zerlings have no place to hide. They are, you know, the, uh, the, the back door is already sealed. But very, very good for Mini to return at just the last minute. And he can even trade it. The positions of the Zerlings. He needs to trade position of the Zerlings, I think. Uh, he doesn't, but maybe that's going to be just fine. Uh, and this other Zerlings. Oh my freaking god. Look at the micro from Mini. He's out of the score. But now... Everything is Zerling. We have a cannon going up already, so this uh, attack is going to be failing. But keep in mind, this map in beta, you have two openings you need to cover as a Protoss player. So some Zerlings are going to be attacking from the southern side, and some Zerlings are going to be attacking from the north side. The Overlord is going to check the situation. Do you have... Okay, the probe comes out, and he sees the Zerlings coming through, so he will know that there's going to be another angle he needs to cover. He's trying to cover it. He needs to cover it with a probe as well, not just a single Zerlot. A single Zerlot alone will not hold. So that's exactly what's happening. And now it's going to be the time of scouting. 
Dan, 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 dan. Mini is gonna try to get inside his enemy's base, and Soki is making the mistake that Effort has made, which is allowing the enemy to scout. You cannot do that unless you're sure to win with your Zerglings attack and free scouting for Mini. So I'm gonna bet you with 90, 90, uh, what is it, 91 cent, I guess, that Mini is gonna win this game because he got a good, good head start. He's made his enemy invest a lot of time and money into making Zerglings. He's forced his enemy to go for Zergling speed with no clear results. Uh, and he's moving out, which I don't really approve. This action is not approved because the Zergling, even though there's like not so, well, I guess actually there's a lot. So I don't know, man. Some, 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 some nice surface area reduction would need to get done here because Zela's gonna get surrounded. Mini, why do you even move out in the first place? Did you not see the Zerglings moving in? Anyway, he's maybe just trying to make sure that he can uh, just trade uh, minerals here, right? The more he can trade minerals, the better. But I would uh, advise against that. I would say it's better for Mini to just keep his Zealots at home because five Zealots can defeat 10 Zerlings, but 10 Zealots can defeat 30 Zerlings. And that's the way uh, the Protoss army scales. Anyways, a nice and clever trick to hide the Zealot in the corner as the Zerlings uh, move out of position. We are going to be seeing Spire coming up. I don't know how late or how fast is the Stargate uh, from Mini here. Okay, he's... Okay, the Stargate's already made, man. The course is already en route. So Mini is, I think, ahead, clearly. And this uh, Zealot is going to be doing a lot of damage. There's a weak drone. Does Mini see it? He just go for a strong drone, which is okay. Uh, but now all of the drones get pulled. And this is, again, buying a lot of time. If Mini wins this game, I'm very happy because that just means more games for all of us, I think. Uh, anyways, Mini gets surrounded. He's going to try to buy some surface area, which he does. Uh, but that unit gets destroyed as well. We're seeing the first Overlord getting destroyed here at the 9 o'clock position. The second Overlord is going to be at the inner 7 o'clock position. The third Overlord is at the inner 5 o'clock position. But I don't think Mini is going to have a chance to take out any more than just a single Overlord. He might go for scouting. Uh, no, he doesn't go for scouting. He's going to return home. I always, you know, wonder... As a Protons player, why do you like go home or go to your next des destination right away after you kill out the Overlord? You sh I think it's gonna be better to fake a movement. So like you kill the Overlord and you head towards your enemy's base, but then after that you turn around. It's gonna be a lot better because uh, your enemy thinks that your over uh, your uh, courses are moving towards his base, but actually the courses are returning home. And okay, drone drill. That's nice. Uh, very very. Uh, and one of the Zelot is not attacking, but now it is attacking and buying a lot of time. Uh, but the end is near for that Zelot. Anyways, 20 supply difference between Soki and Mini. Soki's got two courses. He didn't lose any courses in the first. Oh my god, how many freaking Zelot rush can there be, man, in a single game? Anyways, one Zelot is not yet attacking in the right order. Now it is. We have a Sunken, but that Sunken doesn't target this Zelot. This Zelot's going to be all the way in the back. He starts to engage, and that is premature engagement. Go back. You cannot possibly kick out any drone, so his advantage is just to hold here. Zelot with speed just kicks in as well. We might see a stream of Zelot in the front door. Soki is possibly making a lot of Mutualist now. Uh, no Hydralis. Okay, looks like he made some Scourges and the rest is Hydralis. So let's see if Mini anticipates it because he doesn't have any more vision outside of these Zelots. Um, anyways, but he knows that his enemy has got Hydralis, so he's going to be able to at least like think of something right um, and more the lots going on the other corridor we have cannon getting set up and lurker okay this might be lurker drop where are the overlords we have scourges coming inside the main there's already double cannon you know what on this map there's a place that can get exploited in the expansion that is near the simulator the cannon doesn't actually cover that area so maybe uh, if he doesn't cover the the cho oh what <laughs> we have a high temperature just randomly camped out here uh, and now that the High Templar is returning home, another Zealot gets hidden in the corner. That's like the fifth, you know, the fifth excursion by Zealots into that area. Uh, High Templar is going to return home. We have the Robo. Uh, Lurker is going to try to slip past these units as well as Zealots. Zerling is in the front here. Uh, the Corsairs get saved and Lurkers get on the high ground. What do we have here? Smalls. Uh, that is a nice storm. Another storm on the Zerling. We have four more storms getting ready. One more storm, and that's just damaging some of this a lot, and all the lurkers get destroyed. Is this GG or not? The 25 supply difference, and observers getting morphed, not morphed, but uh, created, I guess, observatory 
it's gonna get to get created first. More lurkers in the front, but I'm looking very happy. I'm a pro boss player, go figure. So it's very, very normal for me to get excited when Mini goes and have some nice games, and also because I want more games. I don't want the finals to just have like five games. That's just terrible. Like ten games would be a lot better, right? Just kidding. Uh, anyways. Dragoon's coming out and maybe I would advise him like uh, in the first game to just make sure that you can go for the expansion before you go for the attack. You need to clear, you know, this base. You need to have set up like pylon and cannon and stuff like that. What is that? And another hatchery. Uh, maybe Sophie is going to put down another hatchery. So that's going to be six hatch hydras. Uh, Sophie's got a nice control. And this game, Sophie decided not to go heavy on the courses. And that is sometimes advisable. Everything is gateway-ish. Uh, and uh, yeah, and sometimes it just kind of mixes the game up, and that's really nice to see. Uh, from Mini, it looks like we're gonna be seeing just both of the players, uh, like bunkering down here. Uh, Soki is gonna take his six hatch, Mini is gonna take the base on the high ground. Uh, anyways, on this map, as a Protoss player, is it better to take the base at the 12 o'clock position that Mini is taking now, or is it better to take the inner five o'clock? I mean, I would say that if you have an advantage. You should take the uh, 5 o'clock, right? Because uh, that base is more vulnerable, but since you are just ahead anyways, it's going to be better to take that base and force your enemy to kind of, like, I mean, you will be able to mine that base out faster, um, like before the other base. Uh, and I usually think that that is better. Anyways, Mini is splitting up his forces, he's covering the different areas. We have some red dot in the bottom left, not so sure for what. Uh, and Mini now knows that his enemy is still on just three bases. Zerling is getting on the high ground. Other cannons done. The cannon gets arrived. And just on time, Dragoon's taking out several Zerlings. And that's that's good. And Probe's getting transferred. Mini is up by a good 42 supply. He's got, you know, eye everywhere. He sees exactly what Ed, the enemy has. He needs to be very, very careful not to lose his cores there, though. He's got two more cores there sitting at home, I think. Uh, or maybe they're somewhere on this map. I'm not so sure. It's going to be a good time to slip a Dark Templar out. Just to kill this random Zerg unit like this. Anyways, we're going to be seeing another clearance here. Just mini whip wiping the floor clean. Do we have a switch into Mutilus? As Soki, it would be nice. But on just 3 gas, it's a little bit difficult. Drop would also be nice. Uh, but Mini's got eyes and ears everywhere, man. I mean, there's a lot of corridors that you need to get co that, that need to get covered on this map. Uh, but in general... Uh, Midi has been really good with just keeping random forces everywhere. Okay, we're seeing the first Mutilist coming out though. So we're gonna be seeing a switch to the air here. And Midi's gonna be careful not to slit, uh, not to uh, spread too thin. He's got two more courses at home. Mutilist starting to come in. Eight Mutilists. This single courses is gonna get sniped. It's gonna need to be very, very careful. The courses get sniped. What do we have? Ten Mutilists. But we have enough Dragoons and Cannon. So these mutualists get chased out and do we have something like a high templar in the main or no, we don't? Uh, so that's it. Anyways, this mutualist is going to be able to snipe a cannon. Okay, Mini, we need to cancel his cannon, which he does. Um, and he needs to focus on his ground army and just making sure that he's got high templar everywhere. This high templar might get sniped. Dragoon's in good position to intercept. What do we have here? Not enough cannon, but still it's going to be very, very difficult to just make sure he covers everything. But anyways, uh, Mini does a nice counter attack and takes out uh, a group of Hydralis here at the potential fourth base of the Zerg player. And these Mutilists have been bruised, so not uh, Bruce Willis, but like the real Bruce. Uh, and yeah, they're gonna have to return home now, I think. Supply wise, Mini nearing 160 supplies, Soki 118. And Soki is finally gonna take his fourth base, but Mini is also ready, ready, getting ready to take his fourth base. Um, it would be nice to have some reavers now uh, in this Okay, looks like the number of mutualists is kind of scary, man. 11 mutualists, some of them are damaged, but that doesn't really, I mean, they cannot possibly negate the power of mutualists when they're still alive, right? They're still very strong when they're alive. Uh, we are seeing another base getting set up at the bottom left, which is a nice, nice change. And Mini is not expecting that because he's got no eyes and ears yet in that, in that area of the world. Uh, and the hatchery is going to be coming up, but Mini should expect soon because uh, he should be wondering where is his enemy building things, right? Anyways, Mitchell is coming in to harass that new fresh base, the new fresh fourth base that just gets set up. We have cannon, just a single cannon. We have a um, high templar. He's not able to snipe anything, but these cannons might get destroyed though. Okay, we have a dark archon getting hidden in the corner. Does Mini see? Uh, I mean, does uh, who sees? Uh, Soki see? I guess Soki doesn't see just yet. 
Yes, Corsair is gonna get sniped. Just two shot sniping. The Corsair, which is nice. The Assimilator is getting targeted upon. Do we have any high temper that comes out of these gateway? Very lucky for Mini. Usually, sometimes, it is kind of mutualist harassment situation. We would see high temper popping out randomly and getting destroyed. And that's just really, really unfortunate for both of us. But anyways, Mini attack again. Mini is on a false for a sense of security. He thinks that he's fighting a 3-base Zerg, but soon it's going to be 4-base. He needs to be careful. He's storming several units and paying attention. So that's good. These two mutualists, bye-bye. Go back to where you came from, which is nothing. Uh, a high Templar gets sniped, maybe. Looks like no. Soki doesn't invest the time and energy to snipe that high Templar. Mini, he needs to discover the new basement. He needs to know uh, what the heck is happening. Why is this high Templar saying hello in the middle? <laughs> Both the player just so 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 storm yourself exactly when you're out of your energy just storm yourself and that's gonna be the best way uh to 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 salvage your 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 forces there. okay is that a Nidus canal Nidus canal okay Soki is up and Mini is gonna have some serious trouble looks like the Archon is also getting ready to get come out though so that's that's nice uh supply wise Soki is behind by about forty supply Mini will need to know about that base like now 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 now. Uh, you know, and have you seen that uh, movie Space Balls? Uh, where there's like a now, now, now. It's like a, okay, it's a it's a comedy, it's a comical satire of the movie Star Wars. Uh, <clears throat> where the guy is watching the like the characters in the movie are watching themselves in the movie, and you know one of the guys says, "What are we now? Like, where are we in the movie?" And the other guys respond. We are at now, sir. And the other guy's like, now? What happened to then? And the other guy says, you know, we just passed it. When? Just now. And then the last question from the, one of the characters is, when will then be now? And the response is soon. That's just really, really funny. Anyways, we have some major attack now, but Zelot enough uh, alone is not enough to take out Lurkers and Dragoon's gonna melt it. Cast a storm now! Cast a freaking goddamn storm! He casts one storm which takes out a single unit, but we need to have more Zelot in the area because these lurkers are really strong okay that is a nice storm one more storm on that dark storm would need to get deployed and he does and that the second storm isn't so good though uh but anyways at least now the the last of the lurker is gonna be fallen but yeah very lucky though for me he could have just suffered a lot more damage in that attack uh but mini doesn't know about the bottom left he's getting kind of cocky right i think uh but maybe we actually don't see what will happen to the bottom left? Mini is gonna come out and take another base. Uh, we are seeing a counter attack by Zerg. It's what Mini need to watch out for is this kind of backstabbing moments because Soki can transfer like 40 supply worth of troops by Nidus Canal and go for the counter attack, which is like what he's doing right now. Uh, Zerlin is coming out towards the nine o'clock position. Another hatchery gets set up, but Mini sees it at the top right with a blue dot. Not so sure what that blue dot is. Uh, but Zelot is gonna come out here and take out the rest of this crackling, I think, because Zelot usually are stronger. Plus two weapons, plus two armor. And Mini pushes the rest of his army back. Mini is not yet able to really penetrate. Uh, but anyways, he's gonna try to take out this base. And that is a nice storm. He needs to be very, very careful and storm more. High Templars, you need to take more storm. And that is a beautiful storm eating up a lot of Zerling blood here. And Zelot coming from behind to reinforce the Zerlings. I'm wasting their time on the Archon while the Zelot clears everything. Now the front attack is gonna happen. The Dragoon is gonna take out the Sun Guns. Uh, yeah, everything is moving through. And an Archon, we need to cast a Dispel or the Maelstrom on the Lurkers, which is the nicely deployed. Another Storm on that Lurker, and that Lurker gets destroyed. And now we have the night. Uh, the, the, the Sun Guns. These Dragoons are getting wasting their, their time here at the other side. And the Mini pay attention to that. That's nice. He casts more storm and he needs to return now because it's not really enough to penetrate. And we have lurkers attacking now. Mini must know that there's a base, a hidden base, at the bottom left because he sees he he needs to anticipate why there's just so many forces coming out of random, random locations. Um, yeah, and that lurker is gonna take out the last of I guess one pylon is gonna get destroyed. The other pylon is gonna get destroyed as well. One more storm from the uh, uh, Templar. Okay, he casts a storm on the zoning, which is nice. And yeah, Mini is gonna try to attack the other base now. He needs to put up some cannons ASAP. But there's this is gonna be banging ahead against the wall. So Mini's best bet is to drag the game into late game and make sure that the top right cannot get taken. If the top right get taken, it's gonna be in some serious complications for him. He needs to okay. Oh, this base gets taken as well. So all of a sudden, Soki is kind of coming back ish. 
uh, Archon and Dark Archon cast your spell on something, counterattack by Zerg at the inner 10 o'clock position, or maybe just going around and trying to go towards the bottom left. Anyways, high tempers are in position to intercept, make some reavers, man. The time has called for reavers, the time has called for scarabs. And Reaver range, whatever, Reaver capacity upgrades and all of those, you know, juicy things. Anyways, the attack is going to come out here. Uh, Mini need more storms. He need more higher grade units like Reavers. Uh, he's casting a storm on a random Dark Storm area, but he needs to cast a storm on the other side, which he does. Uh, units coming from the right side are Dark Archons. Cast your Maelstrom thingy. Is he casting a Maelstrom? He's not. He's forced to get pulled back. And slowly, Soki is coming back, and Soki takes the top right. Oh my god, Mini, switch to Reavers. You need Reavers to fight this. He's just making purely Archon, uh, which I don't blame, because making Reavers is a huge commitment as well. Some some players just don't really want to go there. Okay, on this map, you can exploit this area on the left side from the low ground with Lurkers, and he is going to try to do that, Soki, but before that, he's going to try to do a frontal attack with nice preemptive storm. And he's gonna storm to death these lurkers um, and other units, and that is nice. And another hatchery gets set up as well at the inner six or seven o'clock position. And Soki is kind of everywhere and catching up in supply. I Mini's mean, got a nice, nice lead, but he's not doing the, the work he needs to do. And storm, we need to get deployed before these lurkers is able to do anything. He casts a nice storm. One more storm on that one. So okay, so one lurker gets destroyed, and we have this dark storm at the last minute, uh, buying some time here. Finally, we have Reavers getting deployed, but the last of the Lurker is destroyed. So that's nice. Looks like Mini decide enough is enough. I'm going to attack here, but he needs the support of the Reaver if you want to tackle this base, man. And I would say don't tackle this base. Just make sure Zerg cannot take any more bases on the map. Because if Zerg is allowed to just expand like a vampire, then there's no end to it. And Zerg with the Nidus Canal strategy, it's just really, really more mobile than Protoss. Uh, Mini is almost maxed out, but look at this guys, a maxed out Protoss army isn't that that scary if you don't have Reavers. Uh, if it's just Dragoons and Xehanort, uh, that Archon really needs to be Maelstroming. It hasn't been Maelstroming for like the last 10 minutes, I think, and this base gets set up. Oh my god, how can Mini allow this? I mean, he's got eyes and ears everywhere, he's allowed the Zerg to take like two bases in five minutes. Okay, looks like Mini says, you know what, you can take all the bases you want. I'm just gonna go and take off your front door. Nice Reaver attack here, clearing out a lot of units. The Shadow is gonna come out here, and Shadow and Reaver is what you would need against this kind of strategy. He lands two Reavers. Uh, he takes three Reavers, excuse me, not two. Uh, he needs to be careful. One of the Reavers is way too far forward. I think we have an Archon getting destroyed here. Uh, anyways, yeah, this base is gonna fall. The Archon, we need to cast the Maelstrom now. You have full energy. What are you using your Archon for? If not for attack, counter attack from Zerg now. The, uh, the attack has seen by this observer right in the middle and Mini is going to return the rest of his forces. Uh, we have some Zealot on the high ground which is nice. This base can get destroyed, it's fine. High Templar casting a storm from the low ground. Mini is not casting, now he casts. He casts one storm, two storm. We need to cast two more storms. He's not casting the last of the storms. Alright, okay, he's just casting a blind storm now. But anyways, he's able to clear out the last of the lurkers. The rest of the forces return but Mini is going to be losing a base before that. We have just a single Archon. Uh, it can do some energy and one high template just come out of the gateway but doesn't have energy yet but the other uh, high storm has energy the Templar walks right to the dark storm without doing anything and gets sniped and Mini has been so slow with using his high template we have a double shadow but it's not being used for anything what is he doing why is he even attacking here there's nothing to be gained I mean these lurkers are not like threatening any base it's losing this base and I'm very very sad to see uh, Mini losing another base I mean, he still got 30 supply advantage, but what the heck? How the heck did he allow that to happen? I mean, he was having such a good lead for like 20 minutes. He's got a like a dark arts arm that he refuses to use for like 15 minutes. Reaver is getting sniped, uh, and Soki is just, just so good. A nice, nice cherry on the cake with the uh, uh, plague on the Reaver here. Now, Mini, we need to do some serious damage. The shadow gets sniped, maybe, no, it doesn't get sniped, so that's good. Attack the inner 7 o'clock position, he needs to know about that base. What? I mean, how could he not know that the enemy is taking that base? How is that even possible? Anyways, now he knows. I mean, the, the strategy of the Zerg is just expand everywhere and expand fast. I mean, that's the way to do it. Anyways, Mini is going to attack the bottom left. What the heck? Can you not see that there's a base on the, on the right side? You need to know 
Uh, anyways, the shadow gets picked up and Mini is gonna be at once again hot press. Uh, okay, nice dark swarm here. Uh, Maelstrom, do some Maelstrom business. It's Maelstrom something. Okay, it's feedback. I think he feedback to the defiler, which is nice. But the defiler that uh, Maelstrom finally gets out and Reavers are gonna be able to finally clear out these things here. Even on the low ground, Reavers are deadly. There's no mischance with Reavers except when they you know decided to be stupid. Uh, but usually Reavers are quite quite uh, reliable with their shots. Uh, the Shadow gets sniped, I think, or maybe, maybe not. Okay, the Shadow does get sniped, and this base is yet taken out, but the time wasted is just huge. During this time, the Zerg is taking another base on the map, and Mini is trying very hard. Zerg is in front. Where's the, the rest of Mini's forces? I mean, I mean, Mini has been also very slow, which is moving. The reinforcement, River getting sniped as well, and we are very close to the end here. Mini's got a huge amount of forces amassing in his front door, and he's gonna come out here to try to take this base. And what is gonna? Why? 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 What? Why is he attacking the, the bottom left? Don't attack the bottom left. There's nothing to be gained. He... Okay, man. Anyways, if Mini loses now, then that's just that. That's just fate. Uh, High Templar is gonna get sniped, but very, very good for Minis to react in the last minute. So at least he's making his enemy waste time and energy here. Storm, those units attacking the Archon. Storm yourself. Uh, I guess, yeah, he doesn't need to storm himself. He saves his life, so that's as good. Mini is on four bases. One, two, three, four. He's trying to set up his fifth. Actually, let's count the number of bases here. One, two. So Zerk has one, two, three, four, five, six. Soon to be seven. Mini's got five. If Mini can stop the 7 o'clock base, he's gonna be on even basis with, with his enemy, which is still okay. Uh, but he turned a like, surely winning situation into a half winning, half losing situation, and that's what I don't like. Uh, anyways, Shadow might get sniped, uh, uh, but no, Archon is just way, way too strong. And all of these units get destroyed, another plague would be nice, but maybe it's not really gonna change anything. Mini takes out everything, but let's take a look at the 9 o'clock position. There's some lurker business here. Lurkers under Dark Swarm at 2 3 high damage is gonna get sniped. Mini, we need to pay attention. He's paying attention. He casts double storms, and that takes out a single lurker, so that's nice. At least he clears out a Zerg base. So I still have hope for Mini, but Soki, I would say the advantage is in Soki's head. Soki is, is, has the ball. He's got, you know, he's, uh, he's the one who decides what to happen next, I think. Two more lurkers on the low ground, and Mini need to see that now. Uh, Mini is going to try to take out this base. If he can clear this base, it's great. Uh, but the Shadow is might be getting sniped, so that's not, not good. And finally, we have a cannon getting set up as well. Mini, we, you know what? Mini had a chance to bust the front door like 10 minutes ago, but he didn't. Like, at least he could bust the Hydralis then in the, in the hatchery. If he can do that, then he would really, really set the Zerg back, but now he's going to have a chance to do that once again. He needs to focus attention on the Hydra then and use the Reaver to focus attention on the Sunken, which is doing nice storm. The Nidus Canals is supplying a lot of forces to fly through this. Scourges takes out uh, a Shadow, which, which is not enough, and Mini pulls back in the last minute. Don't pull back, attack! Take out the Nidus Canal. Take out both Nidus Canal. One Nidus Canal is gone. The other Nidus Canal is still there. I'm not so sure where it leads to, maybe the top right. But anyways, these... Um, uh, lurkers, we need to get destroyed by the by the Reaver, not by the Archon. The Archon, we need to pull back, and Mini is breaching the high ground here. Thank God for Soki, this egg are still alive, because this egg is making the surface area very, very small. Uh, not surface area, the opening is very, very small, and Mini is going to take out his enemy's main base. Lurkers, we need to take out those, uh, 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 uh excuse me, what are these things called? Uh, sun, um, lurkers in the back, we need to get out, but they are not. Anyways, Mini is going to be by so much time. Mini takes out all of the infrastructure. Now he needs to pay attention to the inner 5 o'clock position. That new hatchery is getting set up. If he can stop the hatchery from coming up with his reinforcement, it would be great. That high template doesn't have energy. Looks like it maybe doesn't have energy, but he's just trying to buy some time while he takes out the hive, the, the spawning pool, and everything else. Uh, I, I, uh, Lurkers are kind of de deploying late and not really relevant in the equation. They are like the numbers that don't really matter. Uh, in an expression, in a math mathematical expression here, anyways, looks like these lurkers are gonna get destroyed. He needs to take the, out the lurkers on the right side, which is doing. Soki is not paying attention, and all of a sudden, Soki loses like 30 supply. Now the supply difference is 60, and this is what Mini should have done like 20, 20 minutes ago when he had a chance to bust his enemy's front door. Uh, but anyway, two lurkers on the low ground. Are those stop lurkers? They are not stop lurkers. Storms, nice, and take out the last of the lurkers, and Mini escape unscathed. 
uh, I don't know, maybe. Anyways, now Mini, the good thing about this is that Mini, uh, Soki, we need to rebuild everything. Like everything. And there's not a lot of places you can build. This map is not like one of those four player maps when you have a huge main. And there's like four of those mains and you can decide what to do. Crackling's coming here for what? I mean, what is the purpose of destroying these Archons? There's no purpose at all. Even if you destroy these Archons, I mean, nothing is to be gained. Uh, you just waste time, I think. Anyways, Mini is... Uh, okay, is the game still on? I mean, is Mini already winning or is the game still happening? Because now, Mini is uh, 5 base and uh, Soki is 7 bases, but he's lost the main. Uh, those storms are good, but not effective, and there's still another lurker in this in the back here. And we have not enough high temperature to take care, but we have a single archon coming out that takes out the, other, the, the last the lurker. So that's that's nice. Supply wise, Soki is behind by about 30 supply. It would be nice to like just make a dark uh, uh, a dark archon at this point, I think. Anyways, Mini, we need to think about the inner five o'clock position. If he can take out that base, then he's clear for the win. Soki is not gonna have enough economy to support anything but he's gonna try to attack it this is nice also because this base okay why do we have these uh these probes here uh <laughs> they're just flying randomly anyways because this base has the rebuilt lair so he can take out the lair that's nice okay nice nice to snipe the observer but there's like two more observers so it doesn't really 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 matter um he can storm from the low ground as well uh mini is looking for places to attack He's gonna storm from the low ground and take out a single lurker, which is nice. Uh, I, I I advise against this attack. I would say it's better to focus on the other base, the inner 5 clock position. But storms, we need to get deployed now. Those are some nice, nice storms. Because now, Soki is sent back to the Stone Ages, fighting with just Hydralis and nothing else. Uh, small storms, small storm, and morphing into lurkers. Please, just two Archons remaining and two Dragoons. And the Reaver is not deployed. Where's the Reaver? You got a shuttle. Drop it. Why you use a freaking like a cargo, like a transporter if you don't actually lift your goods? But anyways, this base is getting reset up and Mini doesn't know about it. Mini is just, I mean, he's been kind of bad with the intel in the late game. I mean, his intel in the mid game and early game is excellent. But in late game, it's kind of lacking and now counter attack with the shadow might, might getting sniped by something here. The, sh the shadow is out of position. We have some nice, nice storm and shadow. We need to drop things now. It drops. And it he looks like one of the readers can destroy and Mini which just once again really slow in his reaction. Go for the inner five o'clock base. If Mini is not taking out that base now, he might be lost, I think. I don't know. Uh one more shadow. We might get some storm drops here on the top right. Because keep in mind there is no spire. There's no spire. So no more scourges can be remade. These units are attacking, but there's so many storms. So yeah, goodbye. Uh, but anyways, uh this uh inner five o'clock base. We need to get taken care of now. Mini needs to know. He needs to move there and attack it. Does he know about it? Uh, I, I Sometimes I just think maybe I'm a stupid person because I don't really understand how the pro gamers think. Like, if I was Mini, I would think about attacking that 5 o'clock base like 5 seconds ago. Another shadow might get sniped and he needs to, need to know. He needs to drop his stuff now. He loses his shadow. Oh my god, look at his reaction. He's got enough forces though. Still push forward and check things out. He does nice. Another storm on that lurkers is nice. Mini, don't faint now. It's not going to be the time to faint. Man up and attack. And, you know, prove to everyone that you're not just a sloop. I, I just made that word up. But anyways, uh, <laughs> a sloop is a slouching noob. That's what a sloop is. Uh, anyways, the rest of Mini's forces get destroyed. Mini is down to the same supply as Soki. Oh my freaking god. Is this the end of the game? If Mini had those two reavers in the back, he would have won the game. But now, he is on the... I mean... Where's the rest of Mini's forces? He needs to have more. Yeah, he has got like a ton of forces. He's just not using them. Uh, anyways, he's gonna try to remove, uh, like, not so move all of his forces back. He's got high templates on the high ground. That's a nice, nice storm. We have a lurker in the back. Uh, uh, that lurker is gonna get taken out, and some of his probes are even not really mining any places. Uh, okay, seven base Soki versus five base Mini. Mini, we need to not get his shadow sniped. He's got his shadow sniped like several times already. That last of the lurker gets taken out. Uh, and so that's great. Mini, we need to... Okay, some of the Zealot is way too far forward. Mini is concentrating all of his forces here. This is what he should have, like, done before. But anyways, he's gonna have a chance to do it now. High Templars, we need to cast a storm on the low ground. He does a nice, nice storm. But that one Reaver in the back is really strong still. 
but all of the hydrolysts get mounted. Soki is ahead by about 10 supply. Mini is fighting purely with Zealot and high tempters. We have an Archon getting stuck in the corner. A Dark Templar swooping by would be nice. Is that a Spire? If that, were, if that was a Spire, it would be really, really interesting to see. But anyways, do we have a, a Reaver Snipe or a Shadow Snipe? High Templar Snipe, though. Mini is not spawning. Sw uh, Stormy, excuse me. And the last of the Reavers is fallen. Everything has fallen to pieces. Look at Mini's reaction. G freaking goddamn G Mini loses the game. It's gonna be Soki, who is a new crown champion of this year's ASL, ladies and gentlemen. 4 1 victory by Soki. He deserved it, even though Mini showed streaks of brilliance throughout the game. Soki was just much better overall. Thanks for watching the podcast. Please buy me a coffee. The link is in the video description. Subscribe. Bye bye.